Um, the uh, third third team I would like to, uh, or uh, third artist is Harvey Pratt. And Harvey, if you would come up and make your presentation. It's an honor and a pleasure for me to be here. I'm, I'm excited about this whole thing. I'm excited for Native American veterans, uh, that they'll have a place that they can come to. Uh, I'm from Oklahoma. I was raised in Oklahoma. I'm a Cheyenne Arapaho uh, tribal member. Uh, my, uh, I was raised by traditional people. My family, uh, my mother was a National Indian Woman of the Year and Oklahoma Indian Woman of the Year. and. Uh, my family was all artists, and uh, I was very blessed. <clears throat> I was raised by people that, that grew up in the 1870s and 1880s. My mother was, uh, if she were alive today, she'd be 105. So uh, I received a lot of tra old-time traditions and stories, and, and we were always told that uh, I had uh, three brothers and three sisters. There were seven of us. And my uh, uh, sisters would always get mad because... Uh, those old people said, do you treat them boys better than you treat us? And my Aunt Laura said, those boys are going to have to die for you someday. They're going to be warriors. So with that in mind, I've always thought about veterans. When I grew up, <coughs> excuse me, when I grew up, we had to uh, go to dances. And, and uh, when the war veterans came home, they would have a dance for them and a giveaway and they would give them a song and, and they would uh, honor them and we would always have to go up. And so I always wanted to be a veteran. Always wanted, saw how those guys felt and when they came home, a lot of guys that came home from the war uh, had a hard time. A lot of Indians did not because we treated them different. We treated, our people treated us different like we were something special. And so that was always instilled in me as, as a little boy and as I grew up and and uh, whoop. let me go back. I hit too, too many buttons here. I grew up, I joined the Marine Corps, and I went to Vietnam and was with uh, Third Reconnaissance, Charlie Company, uh, and I served in I Corps. And we picked up downed pilots and uh, people that were shot down in spotters, and, and we supported uh, uh, CBs and, any, and base security. And so, to me, that was, I was one of the first Indians in uh, Vietnam. Uh, served in I Corps, and uh, it, it became very special for me. And when I came home, my family had a giveaway, and uh, they gave me a song, and uh, we fed. And uh, it, I felt good coming home. I thought, I, you know, that people welcomed me. And I think back a long time ago, that's the way they did to, to tribal members. When, they, when guys went out and were, whatever they may did, if they went out to gain honors, and when they came home, a lot of times they had to stay outside of the camp until they purged themselves and become clean again. And uh, then they could come in and be among the people. And that's, that's what... Uh, yeah, well, I'm screwing this all up. Anyway, after I got out of the Marine Corps, I joined law enforcement. And I became an Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation agent, worked undercover for 14 years, and uh, became an assistant director. And uh, I was an interim director for uh, 100 days. And, but I loved doing forensic art. I'm a forensic artist. I've done work all over the United States in forensic art. Identified lots of unidentified human remains and, and uh, witness description drawings. And uh, that was my specialty. And I, and, I, and I enjoyed being a law enforcement officer, helping people. And uh, after, after I got out of law enforcement, actually, I was still in law enforcement, and the Cheyenne people came to me, the chiefs came to me and said, we want you to be one of our chiefs. I was trying to be a dog soldier. I wanted to be a dog soldier, and I said, no, the chiefs want you. So the chiefs came after me, and they asked me to join their the chief's lodge, and I did, and I've been a chief, a Cheyenne peace chief for 20 years, and, and I've enjoyed that role of helping people. And so that's... Uh, one of, one of the reasons why I became interested in making this uh, design 
for the veterans, Native American veterans, was that I, I wanted to I wanted to represent Native American people and and the Warrior Sacred Circle, and that's what I kind of call this Warrior Sacred Circle and the Sacred Fire that uh, that we pre that we honor and we pay attention to. This is my design. It's based on circles. Native people believe in circles uh, that the continuation of life and uh, the cycles of life and the seasons and and the plants and everything is a circle. And so I. I did an outer circle. You'll see I put the military medallions on the outside of the walls. There's, there's four sections of this outer wall. And on top of this outer wall, there's footprints. And they start off with white footprints, and, uh, which means a new beginning, the four sacred colors that most tribes have, the new beginning. And then the red is the power of the creator that uh, we all have to honor and respect. And then the yellow is Mother Earth. And, and that's the circle on, the, on, the, on your right. And, I'm sorry, on your left, and that, uh, that represents Mother Earth, the yellow, the beauty of this earth. And then the black footprints is our history, our, our people that have gone before us, our grandfathers, and we remember them. And then we start our circle all over again. So it's a continuation. It's a continu continuation of honor and growth that we have. It's the footprints of the Indian warrior. He knew where he was going and where he's been, and that's what represents those colors on the top. And that red path is... Uh, the red road that most Indians, it doesn't make any difference what tribe you are, what nation you are, you can walk around that circle and, and you can be a warrior, you can be a veteran, you can be a, a war mother, you can be a family member, and you, if you, regardless of what tribe you are, you can be who you are. You can be who you are. If you want to dance, you can dance around there. If you want to sing, you can sing around there, depending on what you want. And you go inside of the inner circle, uh, that's, that's harmony. That's where we all come together, where your family comes together with you and the war mothers and the warriors and the veterans come together and we become one again, like we did a long time ago. And uh, the, granite, the granite walls and the medallions and the inner wall, there's benches on side the inner wall so you can stop and meditate and pray and think about things. And, and uh, you see that inner circle is a, is a vat of water, sacred water. Almost all nations have sacred water. You know, that they, re they revere. Sacred water is, is what makes things grow, what makes things start. And so we, gotta have, we want to have water there so that we can, we can respect that. And then inside is that, is that sacred fire. It's inside a drum, you know. And, it's, and the water circles that, and that sacred fire is there. It's eternal fire. All nations have sacred fires. We all have fires that warms us and comforts us and makes us feel good. And that's what I'm trying to depict. I've got uh, lances there with four eagle feathers on them. And... If I mess this up again, go this way. On those lances, you'll see some circles again. That's where you can tie your prayer cloth. Indians all have prayer cloths. They tie prayer cloths to everything. So that every time the wind blows, that's a prayer sent out for, for your veteran. A veteran can do that for, for his uh, fellow veterans. He can do it for his grandfather, his father. And, make, and then he can do it for his nephew and his son that's going to eventually be a warrior. He can tie these prayer cloths all over those lances. And, they're gonna, and they'll just, every time the wind blows, it's going to be a prayer. It's going to be a powerful place. So we think about prayer cloths and, and the sacred water and the sacred fire. And you get in there and, and the lava that's around that fire comes from the bowels of the earth. Mother Earth gives us that lava and that fire is on that, is on that lava. And so... Uh, when you, when you meet there inside and you can pray and make offerings and, and burn some sweet, sweet grass or cedar or your medicine, you know, and you make a pledge to, to, uh, to your friends. And I think that people come in there and make a pledge and they honor one another and they remember. And this place becomes a place of healing and comfort with that fire. And I think that's what, that's what I'm trying to depict is all the things that encompass these things is going to be healing and powerful and comfortable. And that when, when you get in there, that you're going to feel all those prayers and sacrifices that people are going to make and pledges that it's going to build energy and power. And I think that when you go there, you're going to feel it. You know, God, if you think back over history, uh, there's always a sacred place somewhere in history where someone did something. And when you're walking through the woods and you find that spot, you feel it. You feel that sacred spot. This is what I want this to be. Those veterans can come in there and be healed. 
a hope. Thank you. Are there, are there any questions? Seeing none, okay. Uh, also want to introduce Gina, his wife, <laughs> who... Uh, part of me. His heart and also, also takes care of him. I mean, takes care of our old warrior. 